Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to section 9.1, Graphing Quadratic Functions. Before we get to graphing quadratic functions, we are going to start off with some vocab words. First vocab word is a quadratic function, and that is a function described by the equation f of x equals this right here, what we've been multiplying to and factoring for the last couple weeks, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, and a doesn't equal 0, because if a equals 0, this would not be a quadratic function. Standard form, this is very important, standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, we'll touch on that more on the next slide. Parabola is a U-shaped graph. It is a graph of a quadratic function. Axis of symmetry. Parabolas are symmetric about a central line. And what that means, you will be able to reflect over that axis of symmetry. And we'll touch up more on that later. And the vertex is the very top or the very bottom of a parabola. Now here, remember this is the standard equation for a quadratic function. We want to point out all our a, b's, and c's. We'll notice where my a is. My a is attached to the x squared term. My b is attached to my x, and c is my single number. So here, what is my a? Well, the 2 is attached to the x squared term, so my a is 2, my b is 3, and here my c is 4. Next one here, what is my a? What is attached to my x squared? Well, that's 1. b is negative 3, C is a negative, negative, almost forgot to throw that negative in there, a negative 10. Jumping down here, my A, what is attached to my X squared term? It's 1. Do I have a B term? Is there a single X? No, there is not. So my B must be 0, and my C is 3. How about for this guy? Again, my A is negative 2. My B, do I have a B? I do not have a B, so my B is 0. Do I have a C? I do not have a C. So C is also 0. Now let's go ahead and try and graph one of these guys. There's a couple things that we need to know. First thing, you need to know the standard form, which is right here to point out our A, B's, and C's, and also how to find our axis of symmetry. Well, our axis of symmetry is found by a negative b, or opposite b, over 2a. So the very first thing, when we are asked to graph a quadratic function, when we are asked to graph this, the very first thing we want to find is our axis of symmetry. So we need our a and our b. Well, our a is 2 from this guy right here. My b is a negative. Please note that your b is a negative 8. So we put them in the equation opposite b. So it's a negative negative 8 over 2 times a which is 2. So then we have 8 over 4 which equals 2. So our axis of symmetry is 2. So when you put your axis of symmetry down you're going to put it at x equals 2. So I'm going to draw this red dotted line right down here for my axis of symmetry. So now after your axis of symmetry, what you're going to do, you're going to take your axis of symmetry, which is this guy right here, and plug it in for both of these x's in your function. So let's try that. So I have 2 from my function, and now I plug in 2. I square that, take minus 8 times 2 plus 7. I keep rocking with it, showing my work. I go 2 times 4, minus 16, plus 7. So I have 8 minus 16 plus 7 equals a negative 1. So now with this negative 1, I'm going to put that on my axis of symmetry. And where is that negative 1? We're moving up and down. It is going to be right here. Right? So I put the number that I found, negative 1, on my axis of symmetry where my y's would be. Now, the next step is going back to our axis of symmetry and notice how it was 2. I'm going to pick two points greater than 2 and put them in my table. So I'm going to pick 3 and 4. I would pick the next ones up just so your graph stays somewhat small. Now with this 3, I'm going to plug it back in for the function. Again, we pick these points, 
because they were one greater than this number, and we're plugging it back into our function. So we have 2 times 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 7. That gives us a 1. So I'm going to plug that into my table. That is 1. And then I go again 2 times 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 7 equals now 7. All right, you can show your work or plug it all into your calculator. Trust me, it's 7. And now, with these two points, I am going to graph these two points from my origin. I repeat, from my origin. So 3, 1, I go over 3, up 1, and put a point. Then, 4, 7, from my origin, I go over 4, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and put a point. Now with my axis of symmetry I'm going to reflect these points over my axis of symmetry. Notice how this point is one away from my axis of symmetry so I'm going to reflect it to it and go past it once. Put another point. Notice how this point up here is two lines away from it or two coordinates away from it. So to reflect it I go two to it then I have to go two away from it. Now it opens up should it open up? Yes, it should open up. And why does it open up? Because this 2 is positive. So if A is positive, it should open up. So since it opens up and it's positive, I know I graph my coordinates right. And so now the fun part is to try and connect the dots. And for me, it's going to be a little difficult because it's not going to be the smoothest line. So there's half of the parabola. Whoa, and I really screw that one up and there's the other half so our parabola should look something like this yours will be a little bit prettier and it will be much nicer you now the very last thing we have to find the domain and range the domain is going to be all real numbers because you can always plug in any X our range though is the bottom number here which is our vertex our bottom number so why now has to be greater than or equal to this number and it's greater than why because there's no numbers down here right but our first y coordinate is a negative one so we want all numbers above negative one so it's y is greater than or equal to negative one now when we graph quadratic functions they follow a specific process so if you stick with these steps you will be absolutely completely fine all right so stick with these steps that we're going to cover they're huge first thing we did we drew the axis symmetry which is opposite b over 2a the next thing we had to do was plot the vertex by plugging in what you found in step one then we chose two values less than or greater than uh, the axis symmetry which we found in step one then we reflected those points over the axis symmetry we determined if the parabola opened up or down and then your favorite part you drew it so now using these steps let's try one more the very first thing we have to do is draw our axis of symmetry will we get our axis of symmetry by finding our a and b first so our a is what's attached to our x squared term so it's going to be negative 2 our b is going to be what's attached to our x which is 12 so using opposite b over 2a opposite b is negative 12 over 2 times negative 2 which gives us a negative 12 over negative 4 which then in the very end gives us a positive 3 so this is your axis of symmetry so you're going to put a dotted line or just note put something there so you know what your axis of symmetry is now using the 3 that we just found using this 3 I'm going to plug it in to the given function so we have a negative 2 times 3 that's going to be squared plus 12 times 3 minus 7 simplifying I get negative 2 times 9 plus 36 minus 7 keep going with it it's negative 18 plus 36 minus 7 equals 11 
So now I found my vertex. I'm going to put 11 on this line right here on my axis symmetry. So I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and put a point. Now for my graph, I'm going to go up 2 from 3. So I'm going to go with 4 because it's one more greater than 3 and 5. And I'm going to plug these numbers into this guy right here. Very important. This guy right there. So I have a negative 2 times 4. That's going to be squared. A plus 12 times 4 minus 7 equals 9. So my y coordinate is 9. And then one more. I'm plugging in the 5. So it's negative 2 times 5 squared plus 12 times 5 minus 7. That equals 3. So y is 3. Now I'm going to graph these two coordinates from my origin, from your origin. So over 4, up 9, put a point. 5, 3 from your origin. Over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 3, and put a point. Now I'm going to reflect my points. This was 1 to the x-symmetry, then 1 away from it. And then it goes 2 away from it. So I go 2 towards it, 2 away from it, put a point. My points open down. Should they open down? Yes, they should because I have a negative number in front of my x squared term. So it will open down. So then do your best to connect your points as I miss the first one. See if I can make the next one a little bit better. So far so good and eh. There's a U. Your graph will look much better than mine. All right. Now the very last thing we have to do. Gra or What is the domain? The domain will be all reals. All right. That's just an R with a bar through it. I'll try it again. It's an R with a bar through it to represent all reals. And then our range will always be Y. And now what point is this? This is 11. Do I want points greater than or less than 11? Where are all my Y's occurring? They're going down from 11, correct? So I want points less than or equal to 11. And now I know this looks like a lot to do, but follow your steps. Take it one step at a time, and you will be completely fine. Again, just take it one step at a time, and you will do great. And that does it for section 9.1, Graphing Quadratic Functions, Part 1. Good day.